Adventures of the Teeny Weenies Chapter 22 A Most Unlucky Mouse Well, yawned Mr. Mouse, rolling off his soft cotton bed. I think I'd better go out and see what I can find for breakfast. We haven't a bit of cheese or bread in the house. Now, do be careful, dear, warned Mrs. Mouse. And please don't go near that nasty old trap under the steps. All right, I'll be careful, laughed her husband, and he hurried down the long hall which connected their home with a large cellar where all sorts of good things could usually be found. But on this particular morning, Mr. Mouse found food very scarce, and he was forced to climb about in many places in search of breakfast. While walking along the edge of a basket, he chanced to see some crumbs of bread on the steps. Wishing to make a shortcut, he decided to leap onto an empty fruit jar that stood near, and from there onto the steps. He made a mighty leap onto the jar, but before he could balance himself, he slipped and fell in. His cries for help could not be heard, and it was some time before Miss Mouse, who had been alarmed at his absence, found the poor fellow. Oh dear me, by the great cat's tail, this is most awful, exclaimed Mrs. Mouse, bursting into tears. Go tell the teeny weenies, shouted her husband. They will come and help me out. Miss Mouse ran over to the shoe house, and climbing up the front steps, she rapped so hard that she scratched half the pane off the tiny door. Between bursts of tears, Miss Mouse told the teeny weenies about her husband. The little people promised at once to help. Dear Mrs. Mouse, said the lady of fashion, trying to comfort the tearful mouse. You must calm yourself. You must try to be calm. Well, great claws. I'd like to see you be calm with a husband in a fruit jar. And she burst into another fit of crying as she hurried back to her imprisoned husband, followed by the teeny weenies. The teeny weenies quickly put up a ladder which they had brought with them, and the doctor was soon lowered into the jar, where he found the poor mouse had two badly sprained legs. The general ordered the big windlass brought up, and when a derrick had been built on top of the fruit jar, out of three strong clothespins, the injured mouse was bundled into the biggest teeny weeny tablecloth and pulled out. As it was late, the teeny weenies decided to make the poor mouse as comfortable as possible, for it was quite a long way to the mouse's home, and they thought that after a night's rest, he could stand the trip with less pain. The little men made him a soft bed under the cellar stairs, and after he had eaten a Welsh rare bit, which the cook brought to him, he fell into a sound sleep with Miss Mouse sitting watchfully by his side. We'll be over early in the morning and take your husband home, said the general and the teeny-weeny started back to the shoe house, for it was fast growing dark.